on a personal note, I'm born and raised Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, went to Temple University, graduated with a degree in finance, a minor in marketing. Always been a entrepreneur since I was little. Always had side hustles going on. And after I left Temple, uh, I was a stockbroker for Dean Witter and then for Merrill Lynch. And subsequent to that, I went out on my own and I bet on myself. Love that. Love that. Jay, let's go back for a second. Okay. You're in Temple. Yep. You major in finance? Yes. Now, when you took that major, was this something you thought you were going to use for the rest of your life to go out there and work for someone? Or did you always know you were going to be an entrepreneur and one day just have to put that, fin that finance degree to the side but use what you learned in the classroom to build a business? Uh, great question, Sean. Yeah, I always knew that I was eventually going to go out on my own. Didn't know exactly what it was going to be. So I figured that I'd go out and at the time, man, Wall Street was hot. Uh, you know, the movie Wall Street. Um, I was always in the numbers and finance. And I had some of my, my mentors that were in that field. And so I figured, let me go ahead and, and go and move in that direction. Always knowing in the back of my mind that I eventually was going to going to swerve off a little bit and do my own thing. But I didn't know exactly what that was going to be. So you're working down in Wall Street as I'm a in Philly, broker at the time. Yeah, but my, my office was in Philly. Your I office was in Philly. Philly. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Got you. How long did you work at Dean Witter? 18 months. And uh, then I got recruited to move over to Merrill Lynch. Because at the time, Merrill Lynch was at the top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was doing good numbers at Dean Witter. And I got poached. So I went over to Merrill Lynch and did about three and a half years over there before I finally just, just moved on to my own thing. Before we get into that, were you making good money? Yeah, I was making real good money. Yeah? You know, I used to, yeah, my, my client base, you know, it's your network. So when you're a young black guy, you're dealing with money. My whole concept of money changed. So you're coming out of college, you know, I'm a you know, middle class guy, whatever, I guess you would call it that, you know, my parents. And I'm starting to work with these numbers that were at the time astronomical to me. And so <laughs> I just happened to have a network. Some of my friends played professional sports. My college classmates also had some friends that were in the entertainment industry. And that's kind of what I gravitated towards. So my, my, my niche was entertainers, athletes, and entrepreneurs. And when I started talking to the entrepreneurs and bringing them on as clients, that's when it really hit me. I'm like, damn, this is what I want to be doing. I want to be on the golf course making deals versus in here, you know, working 12, 14 hours a day, making good money, but I wasn't fulfilled. You know, I, I, I'm going to zone in on that because I think that that is, uh, that's the thing that holds so many people back from jumping out there on their own. Number one is that stability. Number right. two a lot of times, you know, people are making good money. They know that check is going to be there every other week. They can depend on it and they mm -hmm. get comfortable. Right. You being a young man at that time, what made you take that leap of faith? Because, you know, granted, you, you're around people who are making great money and right. you're investing their money for them. But right. to jump out there on your own, that's a whole other ball game. You know, so can you give me the, the just the mindset of a person? Because there's somebody who is in this position right now. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're being held back by, it could be fear, it could just be comfortability. Right. What would you say to that person who's in that position? They, they, they want to transition, but it's something holding them back. Uh, great question. The mindset that I had was I always knew that I was going to bet on myself. I know that. I have this stick to itiveness, and when I put my will to things, I'm usually successful. And if I'm not successful at the level that I think I'm going to be, you always learn something in the process. So, what I would say to somebody who's trying to transition from employee to entrepreneur is really think about what is your what is your why. So, this is the analogy I always use. So, as a stockbroker, to be successful in that business, that's a high mountain and a hard mountain to climb, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to have, you want to climb the mountain that's going to have the prize on top that you want, right? Why are you going to climb a hard mountain? And when you get to the top, it's not what you want. So if you desire to be an entrepreneur and you're going to already 
already bust your hump with wherever you're working, why not bust your hump for yours? Something that, that's yours that you can own and it's an asset. So I would say to you, focus on what you want. What does your life look like? What do you want it to look like five years, 10 years? And, and you mentioned something real, uh, Sean, that's real important. Um, you talk about they got used to this paycheck, right? People get used to paychecks. So I wrote an article and it still gets crazy traction called Pacified by a Paycheck. And I wrote it about four or five years ago on my Black Entrepreneur Blueprint blog. And that's really what happens. You got a pacifier in your mouth because you're getting that paycheck. Yeah. When really, this isn't what you want. You want something else, but th this is holding you back. And I think a lot of comes down to self-confidence. It comes down to your support system. And it comes down to the, the, the real bottom line is how bad do you want it? If you don't want it bad enough, guess what? You're not going to get it. But if you truly want it, just like your story, you know, with your internships, you wanted that. So Correct. you did everything that you needed to to get to that. And I don't think a lot of people are, are, are vested enough and really put the effort in to get what they want as an entrepreneur. And I think that's the biggest thing. So bet on yourself, have a plan, and then move toward that plan. You know, I, I, I want to shine a light on something you just said. How mm. bad do you want it? <laughs> you know, yeah. for anybody who finds themselves in this position, Right now, this second, you have to ask yourself, how bad do I want it? Because that's it. anything that's on planet Earth that you really want, anything, no matter how big or how small, right now, if you had a craving for, I don't know, chocolate ice cream, you're going to figure out a way how to go <laughs> out there and get it. But that's how it. bad do you want this change? And um, yeah. that's something that, that you have to ask yourself. And if the answer is not, I want it bad enough to leave, this comfortable right. existence that I know of today, then you don't want it bad enough. You just don't. Right, exactly. If you're not willing to leave that comfortable existence. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.